Welcome back to our Take 5 with the Saints. Today, January the 9th, we celebrate the life of Julia Chester Emery, one of the most significant leaders in the Episcopal Church in the late 19th and early 20th century. And no, that is not an exaggeration. Her impact is felt even today within the church as far as its desire and ability to do missions domestically and overseas. So let's begin with one of the scriptures assigned for her feast day, which is Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. Julia Chester Emery was indeed an oak of righteousness for the Episcopal Church. She was born in Massachusetts, in 1852, and at the age of 24, 1876, she succeeded her own sister as the secretary for what was known as the Women's Auxiliary of the Board of Missions. The Board of Missions had been established by the General Convention in the early 1870s, but like most ministries of that day, oftentimes, as you may have heard if you listened to the video on Harriet Bedell yesterday, deacons and deaconesses, there was a separation between men and women. There was also women's auxiliaries of different ministries, but it did, despite the separation, allowed women to have a place of leadership within the church. And for the next 40-plus years, Julia Chester Emery handled and managed this organization to the point where she was recognized in 1921, the year before she died, was recognized the Women's Auxiliary, but under her leadership with this quote, which appeared in the periodical Spirit of Missions. In all the enterprises of the church, no single agency has done so much in the last half century to further the church's mission as the Women's Auxiliary. The Women's Auxiliary of the Board of Missions was charged with bringing the gospel both domestically, i.e. pushing out to new frontiers on the American landscape, but also going overseas. In fact, that period of the late 19th century was one of the most prosperous times for the Episcopal Church in bringing the mission of the church overseas. Now we think, of course, of colonial Anglicanism from Britain going to places like India and some of Southeast Asia, but the Episcopal Church would travel to places such as China, Japan, Hong Kong, the Philippines, even Greece was one of the places where the Episcopal Church established missions. But the missions were not just simply, let's have church and let's teach Bible. They were places that promoted education, that promoted the empowerment of women, that promoted recognition of social needs and issues among the people to whom the missions would go. One of Julia Chester Emery's great gifts was identifying, recognizing, and then deploying the resources to help meet the needs of people in those places where the women's auxiliary would help to equip missions across the span of the country and of the world. It is by no accident that Episcopal missions grew all throughout the world during this time, again, in large part to Julia Chester Emery's work. Her work today has grown into an organization which is known among many Episcopalians now as the United Thank Offering. While the Women's Auxiliary and the Board of Missions have gone defunct, it grew into this organization which continues to be an organization which through receiving the gifts of thanksgiving from congregations all across the span of the church, uh, opportunities to serve educational and social needs both domestically and abroad through what we now call the Protestant 
Episcopal Church in the United States is done in large part through this organization that was built up by the work of Julia Chester Emery. Please read some more about her as you will find her an absolutely fascinating figure and a reminder that without these leading women of the church in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, the Episcopal Church would be far less today than what it is now because of the faithful work of people like her. Tune in tomorrow, January the 10th. Our Saint of the Day will be Bishop William Laud. Look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.